Protestantism in America is the, is the extreme version of Christianism. They have taken the sacred divinity of Christ and trampled on it to a point where it's 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 debate me, bro. I think that's such a good cautionary tale for us to be like, am I ever thinking that way? Christ is stronger than all the dogmas. There's a new way to do this. And I've been appreciating Jesus a lot more. Mm. Um, because now it's moved away from trying to prove my version of him is right to, okay, how can this man transform. Anything that the mainstream churches don't want to point you to yeah. is usually a thing you need to look at. Writing things down in the ancient world was kind of hard. Yeah. Like, not everyone could do it. Yeah. So he had to have looked really crazy to the point where they were like, this is going to make it in. Yeah. You know what I mean, like, <laughs> they don't do anything to stop him, you know? Because well, he was right. To be fair, also, he had a whip and they knew he could walk on water. So yeah. like, <laughs> I think about that because I actually think the real measure of being born again is placing yourself in that in, in that time and doing that exercise. Really Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, back to Ward Radio. I'm your host, Cardin Ellis. I'm joined today in the studio by Kowiku L, as well as Brad Whitbeck. And uh, today we're going to do a deep dive into a claim you made earlier, Kwaku. I believe if I remember our live stream correctly, you said, and I quote, there's a difference between Christianity and Christianism. Could you yes. elaborate? We, we promised an elaboration. Could you give it to us? Oh, yeah. Well, the two things are separate, um, but they kind of go together. Um, Chris Christianity is the goal for every real follower of Jesus, but Christianism is what tends to be preached at the pulpits. So the distinction is found in the suffix. So what is an ism? An ism is the practice of a philosophy. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So Hinduism, Marxism, Judaism, it's the practice of a philosophy. But the suffix ity, iti, means the state of being. Mm. Oh, okay. So one is, I want to make sure I get this right. You're saying there's a difference between the state of being Christian and just believing in Christianity? So, is that what you're getting at? Like one is what you do and the other is what you become? I would say one is what you believe and the other is what you become. Okay. Okay. So, um, Christi Christian or Christ or Christos means anointed one. Yeah. Okay. So Christianity and bare application means the state of being anointed. Nice. Okay? Now, Christianism, what would that be? Uh, the state of promoting Christianity without completely embodying it? The state of believing in the anointed? Exactly. Yeah. Uh, you did much better than me, Brad. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> so you've got believing in the anointed and then becoming anointed. So take modern American suburban evangelical Christianity, okay? Cool. The Sadie Robertsons mm -hmm. and the uh, and the the Elevation Church and and you know, harmless, nice, good people, Rock better on. music than us, yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you listen to their sermons and it's very much about adoring and revering Jesus and believing that Jesus is sufficient and his grace is sufficient and all those things. Yeah, belief is a huge part of it. It's belief, it's belief. And then you take American Protestantism, and I just I made a distinction between those two because now there is a distinction. Okay. Protestantism is boring and evangelicalism is cool, okay? No. <laughs> oh, interesting. <laughs> um, apologia, those are Protestants. Mike Winger is a Protestant. It's people who are, we believe in sola scriptura. We believe in the Trinity. You go to Hillsong Church, I don't really care if you believe in the Trinity or not. They're just happy that you're there. Okay, yeah, make okay. sure you got the right designer jeans on and maybe get invited to the after party. But like yeah. Protestantism is you must confess and say the philosophies that the ruling class believes in or else. Hmm. Protestantism in America is the, is the extreme version of Christianism. It is what we say, what we say, don't veer away. 
But both of those, I think, missed the mark. Okay. Christianity is much more spiritual and much more of how do I become something more? Mm -hmm. And it begins, you have to start asking yourself these questions. It's almost like Christianity is the transformative religion. Yes. Where Christianism is about focusing only on what you believe but not how to put it into practice or it's almost like the veneration if i'm understanding you correctly it's almost like the promotion and the veneration of a christian value system as they call it as you would promote perhaps a good health program at your gym it's more like a promotion of the health code itself instead of becoming a practitioner of the health code that embodies the health that is guaranteed by the gym membership of the health code, right? Am I understanding yeah, you yeah. correctly? I, you, so you notice okay. this on Christian YouTube a lot, right? You'll see, yeah. um, yeah. um, you'll see Mike Winger is a great example. Okay. Okay. Yeah. He um, loves us. Yeah. Yeah. He behind his desk with the <laughs> mic arguing about, well, this per NT Wright says this, but John MacArthur actually disagrees. And the original and I really Greek. Think the, the, the Greek. It's like, okay. And then, and then they have uh, uh, this. This person ignored my challenge to a formal debate on the subject of substitutionary atonement. And you're like, what do you? This is a bunch of Call of Duty nerds sitting around. <laughs> are, like, it's literally the equivalent of video game nerds. They have taken the sacred divinity of Christ and trampled on it to a point where it's 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 debate me, bro. Oh, okay. And it becomes more about who knows that doctrine better yeah. it's, it's and, it's and not about christ it's all ego yeah. i'm the smartest guy in the room right it's james white i'm the smartest guy listen to me i've been doing this forever yeah and um christ came to destroy the ego so i started to notice these two things and i was like hmm this is super super interesting because both kinds of american mainstream christianity you have the re- the the revering christianism which is all all about how great jesus is but not a lot about how to become exactly like him. And mm-hmm. then you have a lot of, here's what he said, and here's what really, here's what Paul said. And here's the accuracy of Paul's teachings. So just say you believe these things, and that's enough. But then the other side, you have people of all different faiths who believe really in Christianity. Now, um, oh, and you'll find people who believe in Christianity in all, all, no matter things. what exactly. sect they're a part of because they focus on becoming like Christ. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. And, and Christ is stronger than all the dogmas. Mm. So no matter, so he's gonna if like if you want to follow Christ, it doesn't matter the dogma, you're gonna follow him. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I was thinking about this because I was like, well, every time I hear, um, you know, you never knew me, depart from me, ye that work iniquity, people always use that to like support their team. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, they use you know, it as an exclusionary measure yes, yeah. against those that aren't in their very, 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 very specific it's tribe. It's like, Christ's going <laughs> to say, you know, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Good thing we're the reforms, Reform Seventh-day Adventist church. And he won't say that to only, like, really? Do you know what it's I like, hear what? when I think about that? What, what? Zoramites. Mm-hmm. And the way that they had their Ramiumptum prayer of like, we thank you that you have made us better than our brethren, right? I think that's such a good cautionary tale for us to be like, am I ever thinking that way? You know, yeah. like, am I ever making it so that this is the only option? No, no, no. We recognize there are people within every tradition that are for Christ and at the same and, time and, and against Christ. We've made mention of the Mormon caste system as well, even within the culture of our faith, unfortunately. Yeah. Sometimes even we end up having members in our ranks. Me, never, of course. Clearly. But it, clearly. So, yeah. so how do we you apply? You would never sin. <laughs> so, so what is the real application of Christianism? Because I've been reading the New Testament, um, uh, kind of uh, taking taken a cue from A Course in Miracles, to read the New Testament with a psychotherapeutic application. Oh, interesting. What's okay. a course of miracles? Oh, phenomenal. We'll have to do a different episode on that. Okay. Well, is it a book or what? It is a book. It's oh, one okay. of the best books a, ever written. A channeled book, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, so is most scripture, but. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look at you. Just the book of Revelation is literally Ooh. channeling and visions. I mean, mm. so, so a couple of different ways to, fi- to find Christianism is one, um, Anything that the mainstream churches don't want to point you to yeah. is usually the thing you need to look at. Okay, So first one is this. <laughs> Christ says, if a man says, look here, look there is the kingdom of God, I say unto you, believe him not. 
the kingdom of heaven is within. You go, huh? Okay. Kind of a weird thing to say. Yeah. What do you mean by that, Jesus? What do you mean by that? So you go to Matthew four, because okay. I start. Later, I just started reading at Matthew three. Should I should I look it up or? No, no, I can just give it to you. I can oh, okay, it. rock on. Um, so I started reading at Matthew three because I'm doing some New Testament study, and. Matthew 1 and 2, it's like, all right, he had to flee. Herod is being a psychopathic murderer. Mm-hmm. And then who's related to who and who you know begat who? Okay, let's start at Matthew 3. Then you get to Matthew 4. John the Baptist in the wild. And um, by the way, I just I love Matthew 4 and the description of John the Baptist. Because remember, rec- writing things down in the ancient world was kind of hard. Yeah. Like, not everyone could do it. Yeah. So he had to have looked really crazy to the point where they were like, this is going to make it in. Yeah. You know what I mean, like, <laughs> uh, like oh, this guy is for sure making it in. Uh-huh. You know? <laughs> um, so, uh, one, he, he runs out and he says, Repent ye, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now, every time we read that, we think, we think with the, uh, uh, the apocalyptic lens. Yeah, it's we right around the repent. corner. It's coming. But this is was the beginning of the earthly ministry so why would he say that and i was like okay what is what 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 would what is the what is christian what is, what is christianity in here what's not what's not christianism the king christ says the kingdom of heaven is within mm-hmm. and he doesn't say repent the end is nigh he says repent the kingdom of heaven is at hand okay meaning the kingdom of heaven is come in person mm. at hand Right hand of God, okay? And I'm like, what does repent mean? Turn away. Turn away for the kingdom of heaven is in person. Right? Turn away from your pride. Turn away from your sin. The kingdom of heaven is at person. Now that is an application. That's like, okay, wait, wait, wait. If I was living right then and there, and I had heard that, I had heard the wild man say, Turn away from your sin, turn away from your ego, and turn away from your pride. The kingdom of God has come in person. What would I say? I'd be like, all right, crazy guy, thanks. I'm going to get my uh, yeah. my hummus chai latte or whatever they had back then. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> or would I go, what is this What is this crazy guy? No, because remember, John the Baptist was the equivalent of the dude with, pi- with pictures on the wall and strings going from uh-huh. place to place who hasn't washed his hair. <laughs> there is his, did you no hear what the CIA is doing? Yeah. 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 Yes, like, so it had come through an unconventional source, that message. And Christ consistently does the thing people don't really want him to do. The, Mas- the Mashiach is going to be the warlord who's going to destroy the Romans and make us reign supreme like the scriptures say. And he comes and says, no, you need to remove your ego and remove your pride for the kingdom of heaven is within. They didn't like that. Mm-hmm. They didn't like that at all. Mm-hmm. Now, Cardin, think about you right now. Take your vices, take your virtues. Okay, Okay. cool. Uh, booze and I uh, have good handwriting. All right. <laughs> oh, did, was I not supposed to say that out loud? Oh, okay, so, cool. Sorry. No, take the no. vices to virtue. Take take how easily you follow the crowd. What narratives you're more likely to believe and give credence to. Um, how easily angered you are. Take everything about okay. you right now and place yourself in Judea during the ministry of Christ. Okay? Yeah. Okay. And honestly ask yourself, would I have believed that borderline apostate mystic? That is a good you, now, thought exercise. Or would I have followed the crowd? Okay, now I'll tell you this. I've actually thought that before. And this is the conclusion I've come to. I would have believed that Jesus is the Christ. I could have swallowed the pill that, okay, I thought he was going to be a political messiah, but he's a spiritual messiah. I have a feeling my problem wouldn't have been with Jesus. And I, 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 I give myself credit. I do believe that I wouldn't have gone with the Sanhedrin and I'd be down enough to go with Jesus, right? Okay. But where I'm like, oh, I don't think I could have done that is Jesus Christ looking down at those that crucified him and betrayed him and saying, okay, forgive them for they know not that they do. Oh, I would have had that grudge forever. And the second one is when the apostle Paul basically took over the church 
this is the guy that stoned Stephen. And if I had been an early Christian that had believed Christ enough to get baptized, except the fact that he was crucified by the very Roman oppressors I thought he was going to liberate me from, and then had to shift him in my mind from being a political hero to being a spiritual one, I think I could have gotten over that hump knowing myself. But the idea that that mother freaking Sanhedrin dude that was the one out persecuting all of us, killing us, killed my cousin, killed Steven. Oh, he just saw God and wants to run the show now. Freaking screw that guy. Like that's one where I'm like, okay, I think I would have accepted Jesus, but Paul, no. Well, I, I think it's, it's, it's an interesting um, exercise because one is you, you look at a lot of members of the church and, they kind of, a lot of people, especially in Utah, just kind of go with the flow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now you have to ask yourself, would they have just gone with the flow back then? Would they have just, like, what's going on? Oh, there's a, yeah, I don't really think much about it. Whatever. It's like, the, 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 the son of God is here on earth walking around. Yeah. And they just kind of, eh, whatever. I'm just kind of going with the flow. I just kind of, I think about that because I actually think the real measure is, of being born again is placing yourself in that in, in that time and doing that exercise and really really thinking and asking yourself and going I would I might have been in the crowd that stoned him and you know and you I, go if that's true what do I need to change yeah and and I think another good thing to think about and consider is like what would you have said if Christ said to you hey uh drop all your doing and come follow me, right? Like what would have compelled you to do that? Would you have listened to what he had to say if he called you? Right. And then I think take it to the next level, maybe pray and ask Heavenly Father, like, hey, what would you have me do? You know, like we're, we're taught that prayer is supposed to be a way that we bring our will into uh, alignment with the Father, right? And I think one of the best ways we can do that is by asking him what would he have us do what will should we replace ours with yeah you guys are so much deeper than me like my last thought these past 30 seconds as you were talking about like what would i have done how would i would have used prayer to you know better accept him and get in the mindset of christianity and so on and so forth i was literally thinking i bet i would have been the roman centurion (laughs) <laughs> you know and what kind of sandals would i would have worn with that outfit what would i sword look like (laughs) Um, (laughs) well uh so uh, on that brad after the transformation happens to the disciples, yeah, it's almost like Christ is like, okay, you're no longer of this world. You are completely, you, you, the Jews think you're crazy. Okay, the Romans think you're crazy. The craziest of the Jews, like we're in, we're in this thing now. Okay, yeah, mm-hmm. and then he starts. Making the Romans mad, yeah, <laughs> and they're like, uh, uh, because by the way, you know what baptism was back then, right? No, what baptism to be? It was it was a political act. Okay, it's okay. it's religious now, but you were baptized into a new kingdom. Okay, okay. so oh, you mean early Christian baptism because we yeah. know there was pre uh, Christian mikvahs and and pre Christian baptism and things like that, which used to be an anti Mormon argument against our church, but archaeologically has been venerated. So I mean, sorry, has been uh, vindicated. So you were saying that the ethos of the early Christian baptism yes. was that of being baptized out of the Roman Empire and into this new kingdom of heaven. Yes. yes. Okay. Cool. Yes. Keep going. Um, it was the outward manifestation of the inward inner king inward kingdom but it literally meant your allegiance was no longer to rome Mm. and hey by the way to say christ is king means tiberius isn't Mm -hmm. yeah that's true and that's why they that's why they um nailed in the three languages both the aramaic the greek and the hebrew behold the king of the jews Mm -hmm. on the top of the cross because they want to show this what happens when you say that you're king in our kingdom okay and um, so when go read the New Testament and try to read it from a psychotherapeutic lens and you'll you'll notice there's a number of lessons we miss. My favorite lesson so far in in the Gospels is Christ's last act of defiance. Hmm. 
his last act of defiance is chasing the money changers out of the temple. Ah. So the symbology of the bankers and the temple is okay. the bankers trying to play God and put themselves in the throne of God. Okay. Now, what is the uh, what 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 is the uh, um, real lesson out of Christ chasing them out? Um, d- d- don't corrupt that which is holy. You know, uh, just as in the Ten Commandments, it says, "Don't take the Lord's name in vain." Uh, don't take the holy practice of temple work for uh, personal monetary gain. Now, take it a step further. Uh, do your business outside of church. <laughs> I don't know what. Uh, the, the, it, it, what what did Christ say? You've turned my father's turn house top, into yeah, a turn not my my father's house into in, a den of in thieves. den of thieves. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But imagine, okay, you're the bankers, and you're outside. Your money's everywhere, and you see Yeshua there with a whip standing over you, and all of the people are looking at you on the ground. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like. Huh. He just... The bankers are on the ground right now. Like, these are, these are the... Like, these people have control over us. This is Christ's way of letting them know they don't have control over you. Mm-hmm. Their only power is that you're giving them power. Their money is on the ground. Their boxes are b- busted open. This is fake. It's and, like and the think, end of this is, Fight Club. This dude. is the Matrix here. It's and, fake. This it, money is fake. This isn't real. And part of why I think the bankers could not resist him is because they knew he was right. They don't do anything to stop him, you know, because Whoa. he was right. To be fair, also, he had a whip and they knew he could walk on water. So <laughs> like, like, uh, exactly, because he was right. <laughs> okay, so what's, we, we got a heart well, out here the, in the, a minute. The, the, what? I, I just want to make sure the audience knows here. The danger, what the danger of Christ was not even the miracles. It was the implication of his actions was opening their eyes. And the minute these anointed people were born again, they were going, this is all fake. These money changers are fake. I don't have to follow and this. Awakening these people to be like him. Exactly. Now, that is the most terrifying thing to Satan. Because Satan wants you within the matrix. He wants you within the world. And Christ is like, no, you got to be born again. You're, you've got to wake up. Because to wake up, become anointed, to become anew. That's how you become a Christ, okay? A Christian is literally a little anointed one. So now, you've got the biggest threat. Three days later, he's dead. After he whips, he whips the, the money changers, he says, in thrice days I shall be dead. What are you talking about? You, you called them vipers. You said they were children of Satan. You 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 fed the masses. You you have done. You have pissed everybody off. It's like yeah, but you don't mess with the bankers. You're about to watch. <laughs> You're about to see what's gonna happen. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Seriously, three days at it was the bankers, and then he was he was dead. And then the resurrection of it is just again to prove among many things. When you are anointed. When you are when you are literally new, you can't be killed. It isn't possible. Yeah. Mm. So that's been sort of like the, the lesson here is like, whoa, this is a lot better than arguing about what word means what. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, uh, did he use a bullwhip or did he actually use a rope with a well NT right and say that doesn't matter. The the point is he's letting us know the bankers don't have real power. The only power is that we give it. Imagine what happens if you give the power to God in discipleship, right? That's that's where the real power should be going. So Christianity, Christianism, it's a wonderful thing. Look into it. I might have, maybe I'm the first person to coin this, to, 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 to coin this, uh, this comparison. That'd be kind of cool. But this whole thing kind of started with A Course in Miracles. And as I'm reading that, it had me thinking, man, there's something, there's a, there's a new way to do this. And I've been appreciating Jesus a lot more. Mm-hmm. Um, because now it's moved away from trying to prove my version of him is right to, okay, how can this man transform? I yeah. love that. I, it's gone from, say that again, it's gone from trying to prove how my version of him is right yeah. to how he can transform my life. Yeah. 
Yeah. That is awesome. And, you know, oh, got one last thing to say before we go, Brad? Oh, that's just what I think what Jesus would want us to be doing, you know? Yeah. Like, how do we apply what he taught? How do we understand those things that he taught? It brings me back to what's repeated in the Gospels over and over. He that has an ear to hear, let him hear. And he that has an eye to see, let him see, right? Like, if you want to know what Christ was teaching, I think you have to be looking very carefully and letting the Spirit guide you to help understand him. Because like you're talking about Kwaku, he's teaching them that that hierarchical structure that they're captured in with the uh, bankers there isn't real. That isn't what they're trapped in. Become anointed, step out of this, and be a child of God. Awesome. For this conversation and more, please make sure you check us out at wardradio.com. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. Before you go, please make sure that you like the video, share it with your friends, and if you haven't subscribed yet, please let this be the video in which we earn your subscription and that you press the alert button so you're alerted to all of our fun live streams and standalone videos and community posts. Also, if you'd like to help us out, please consider joining the channel. Members get all kinds of cool perks and benefits. They get early access to a lot of our videos and special emoticons and emojis during our live streams and preferential treatment there. It's a lot of fun speaking of a lot of fun we have a super cool discord if you'd like to join our discord check us out on wardradio.com there's a link to the discord there also you can sign up there for our newsletter our newsletter is a lot of fun and you can put your email address in there and if you'd like to contribute to the program please consider looking us up on venmo or on the cash app we're on both of those platforms also if you just want to keep watching more content right about here and probably right about here are going to be some more videos. Please check those out. And as always, for this and more, please make sure that you look us up and check us out at wardradio.com. This is what it's like to be one of the best. Moving to the beat, feel the song in my chest. Yeah, you know we turning up, never settling for less. Like, woo, gotta go big to make a statement. Stomp your feet through a machine.